Our Roger Riley paid a visit to one of those hard hit towns up north, Spencer. Over the past 12 hours, some of the people of Spencer have spent time in three shelters. Today, checking in at a church, which is housed in a former shopping mall. Sandy and Lorraine Jeff had short notice. They had to leave their house. Pretty soon it got a little deeper, and all of a sudden the neighbor girl came, and she says, you've got to get out of the house now. And we grabbed medications and phone cords. Jamie Booth came with her family to the shelter Saturday afternoon. For her kids, it was like a camping trip. Horrific. Absolutely horrific. We have friends stranded on the south end of town that have nowhere to go, have, as far as I know, no food at this time yet. No, it's just terrifying when you know you've lost everything, you know. It's hard to know. It's not knowing where we're going to go, what we're going to do. In the town of Spencer, landline phones don't work. Cell phones don't make calls or do data. The only way to get information is the local radio station, KICD. The floods knocked them off the air. And because of the hundreds of volunteers in the community that came and helped sandbag to get the sandbags around our transmitter building and around part of our broadcasting center. Uh, we were able to eliminate further water coming in. I've been at the radio station for over 40 years, and this is the first time we've ever seen any of the devastation like it is here in Spencer. Well, residents I talked to here in the shelter say they're anxious to get out of the shelter and get to their homes and start cleaning up and rebuilding as soon as possible. From Spencer, Roger Riley, WHO. 13 News. Meanwhile, the best Spencer officials could do was hold a news conference and encourage residents to be patient until the water recedes.